What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So with the release of SketchUp 2025, your materials became a lot more important. In this video, we're gonna talk about some things you can do to make your materials look even better. Stick around to the end because I'm gonna give you links to some of the best websites for downloading free textures to use inside of your models. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. And by the way, we're gonna get way more in depth on all of this in my upcoming rendering and SketchUp 2025 workshop, which is happening on May 8th. So that's gonna be available for all SketchUp Essentials course members. You can find out more at the sketchupessentials.com slash render workshop. And so the first thing we need to do is we need to inspect our new materials over in SketchUp. And the first thing you're gonna notice is when you click over into things like your asphalt and concrete or your roofing, really any of these, you're gonna notice that these materials look a little bit different. So the previews have been set up to be a little bit different. The preview window is a little small. So you do have a little bit of trouble telling things about this. This is something the SketchUp team is aware of, so I'm hoping that's gonna get adjusted. But, but notice how when you select a material and you apply apply it inside of SketchUp, you're going to have additional options in the edit tab. And so specifically, notice that you're going to have the options to fill different slots with materials. And so what I want to do is I want to hop over and I want to take a look at some of these different maps and how they affect the way that things look in SketchUp. And then at the end of the video, we'll talk about some places you can go in order to actually download additional materials. So when we first select a material and we go into the edit tab, notice how we have an option for metalness. What metalness does is it's really something that is either set to one or zero, right? And basically what the one or the zero does is it tells SketchUp whether or not an object is metal. And so if it's metal, it's going to reflect light in a certain way. And notice how in this situation, what this is doing is this is actually reflecting the sky dome that's in the scene. So if I change the sky dome to something different, notice how, and I'm gonna go ahead and set my sun location right here, but notice how when I do this, this material, because it's metallic, is reflecting the light um, that comes off of the material. Now, this is a little different because there's also an option over here for roughness, which affects reflectivity. And so with metalness, what you get is you get that little bit of distortion when something is made of metal, this kind of like bumpiness in here, where if we were to turn the metalness off, we were to turn the roughness all the way down right here, notice how you're getting more like reflections off of this sphere. So the metalness is literally us telling SketchUp, hey, this thing is metal and we want you to act that way. Now, this gets really interesting when you start dealing with materials that have metalness maps. And so this is a material that I've downloaded from Polyhaven and basically I've filled the slots with the PBR material maps that come with that material. And so let's talk about PBR material maps for just a second. So if you go to a website like Polyhaven, and let's go ahead and let's pick this rusty metal. What it has is not only does it have this color map, which is basically going to be the image that's repeated across a surface, it also has other maps that tell materials how to behave. So in this case, for example, notice how this is the metalness map. And when I bring this in, the darks and the lights contain information about what the light should do. So in this situation, the lighter areas are going to be more metallic. The darker ones are going to be less. And this basically tells the rendering engine, hey, interact with light different in these dark areas than in these light areas. So within SketchUp, you're going to have five different maps that you need to worry about. The first is going to be the color map or the diffuse map. This is the image that gets repeated over and over again inside of SketchUp. You're also going to have a metalness map which is going to set how metal something is and where it acts more metallic. You're going to have a roughness map, which is going to set where reflections occur off of this object, right? So I think darker areas are going to be more reflective. I'm not 100% sure on that. It's one or the other. Either the darker areas or the lighter areas are going to be more reflective than the other areas. Then you've got normal maps, which we'll talk about in a second, but a normal map basically contains um, information about the ups and downs in an RGB format, meaning the ups and downs are encoded as 
access color information in this map. You don't need to know too much about that other than that's what this does. And then finally, you have an ambient occlusion map, which is going to highlight the darks and lights. And we're going to take a look at all of these, but I want you to understand what they do. This map is going to highlight crevices on your model. But if we hop back into SketchUp right here and we take a look at this material, notice what I've done is I've downloaded all of those maps and I've loaded them into these slots. And so what that does is that allows us to affect with the sliders, how strong these effects are. So notice how with metalness, you usually just want it to be a one or a zero. So if it's metal, it's a one. If it's not, it's a zero. But then the roughness is going to set how much and where that object reflects. So notice how if I bring the roughness all the way down right here, this is very reflective. Usually with roughness, you're going to be kind of somewhere in the middle. And there's a point in here where the rusty portions of this stop being reflective and you're more getting just the reflections over here. So really these kind of work together between the metalness and the roughness, but you can use this in order to more accurately um, simulate the way that light is going to work inside of your 3D model. Now let's take a look at a roughness map. And so a roughness map is basically going to tell SketchUp where a material should reflect. So I'm going to go ahead and select this right here and let's go ahead and let's rotate our environment or let's pick another environment. Actually, we're going to pick one with a lower sun and I'm going to rotate this around right here so you can see this a little bit better. But in the case of this material, notice how the roughness is setting where the object should reflect. So if I uncheck the roughness map, notice how this becomes very flat and it just kind of has like a uniform reflection of light. However, when you load that roughness map in that's associated with this material, and you usually have to go find it by clicking on replace the roughness map. I think this was dark ocean tiles, but you just load in the roughness map right here. And all of a sudden SketchUp knows, okay, I should reflect in these dark areas, but less so in kind of the crevices right here. And you can adjust the strength of that using the slider if you decide that you want to do that. And so you can kind of see this a little bit better um, if I toggle the normal map off, which we'll take a look at in a second, but I've brought the normal down right here. But notice how if you look at this and you look at the way that the light is reflecting, you're getting reflections off of the tile areas, but not off of the grout areas. So this map is telling SketchUp where that reflection should occur. And a lot of the time you're going to kind of couple this with that normal map and you got to be a little bit careful because if you like overdo the normal map even with your roughness all the way up right now things can look very reflective right here so you got to kind of like you got to kind of find that middle ground at the moment i do find the normal maps once you bring them in make things look a little more reflective than maybe they should but that might be something that gets tuned in further releases but your roughness map is going to set your reflections so next up, we've got a really interesting one, which is the normal and bump map. And so what the normal map does is it makes things look bumpy. So in the case of this object right here, let's go ahead and let's download, let's pick a different PBR material. So we'll pick maybe this brick right here and then this brick right here. So if you look at this, these objects in the SketchUp library have a normal map associated with them right here. And so notice how when that normal map gets loaded in, it takes this object from looking very flat like this, and it can make it look very bumpy. Now, again, I don't really like that there's a sheen on this right now. I'm hoping that's something that can kind of get adjusted in the future. But notice how this is taking that surface and it's making it look way more bumpy and less flat because that's one of the big problems. And if you toggle back to SketchUp's just normal view, you can kind of see this. This looks very flat, but when you bring in those normal maps, then things look a lot bumpier. So with this one, for example, if we toggle our normal up, Notice how, again, you're getting a significant amount of bumpiness in here like this. So you can use this in order to make surfaces that previously looked really flat, not flat. So this is probably one of the more um, 
powerful maps that you're going to work with. And so those normal maps are going to make things look bumpy. And we're going to take a look at an example where this gets even more powerful in a second. But then the final map type is ambient occlusion. And we talked about this a little bit, but what an ambient occlusion map does is it basically highlights the crevices on a surface. So this, I think, was just another polyhaven material. But notice how that ambient occlusion map highlights the dark areas on here. So if we were to just look at this like this, right, it looks very flat without the uh, PBR materials loaded in. But if I turn this on, notice how that ambient occlusion map is going to really highlight those crevices on this surface in order to make it look um, much more like it has some depth to it. And so where this gets really interesting is this is a metal roof material that's built into SketchUp. And so if we select this material right here um, and we edit it, notice how if I bring the ambient occlusion map down, we lose a lot of that kind of like up and down in this material. And then if I bring the normal map down, notice how this whole thing is actually a material that's generated using those maps. Meaning if those maps are toggled off, then the normals no longer make this look like a piece of metal. They just make it look like a flat sheet. But if we bring that normal up, notice how this highlights those depths and then that ambient occlusion highlights it even more. And so then you get the, the illusion of this being kind of an up and down. Now, note that with the normal maps, they're not actually moving the geometry in your model. So it's kind of like faking the way that this looks 3D, but loading these maps in can be extremely valuable and extremely helpful for the look of your model. And so if you're planning on rendering in SketchUp, you need to load in these maps for all of your materials. And so a couple things about that, and let's talk a little bit about where you can get some additional materials. So first off, I will say that the built-in material libraries are a little bit lackluster in this new release. And again, I would expect more of these to be added in the future, but there's just not a ton of them in here, well, it doesn't mean that SketchUp hasn't made a bunch of materials available. It's just that they're not available here. So what you can do is you can actually download collections of materials by going into the 3D warehouse. Notice how there's a note right here that the SketchUp content library is now here. Well, if you click in this, what this is going to do is it's going to give you access to the SketchUp content library. Well, notice how there's multiple different collections in here of additional kinds of materials. So if we look at this, notice how you can either click in here and download individual materials if you want to do that. So let's say we wanted another metal material, for example. We could just scroll down to the SketchUp metal collection right here. And we could pick something like this green metal cladding or maybe this rusty metal cladding. But if I click on this, I can download it into my SketchUp model. It will then show up in my end model section. So you can see it right here and you can apply it to a surface. So say that we wanted to apply this to the back side, the surface right here. We were able to download that and bring it in just like this. So you can download individual materials or you can download that entire library and then save it. So if you want to do that, what you can do is I'm going to open up a new SketchUp window. And so you could download that entire library just by clicking on the option right here to download and you can bring that into a SketchUp model. Now you have to be careful with this because these are actually really large files, which is why they don't ship with SketchUp. Um, because remember that the materials actually kind of live in your in model section. They would actually make your SketchUp models kind of big. So what's happened instead is they've been made available as these kind of like standalone materials right here. We'll say that you wanted to save all of these. What you would do is you would delete out anything else that's in your model, right? So these all get brought in as materials, but the first thing I want to do is I want to delete out anything but these tiles. And so I don't know why this is showing up like this. Um, you should be able to purge unused right here, and it's not letting me do that. What you can do instead is go to Window, Model Info, Statistics, and Purge Unused. The reason why is because you don't want any materials that were in your model before to be ex exported with this. But then once you do that, what you have is you have a file that just has these SketchUp materials, right? The wood materials in them. Well, what you can do is you can click on the drop down. You can do a Save Collection As. And what that's going to do 
is that's going to allow you to save all of those materials to a folder. Um, so it'll basically export each one of these SKM files to a folder, and then you can just open that later. So for example, I've done this with a bunch of these where I can do an open or create a collection. So if I select this folder, I've saved a bunch of those materials to a brick folder in here or a colors folder or whatever. So I've got all of those that I've saved and I can access all of them. Um, and they're living in kind of a separate folder. So I'm just using the library in order to do that. So that's one place to get ready-made PBR materials for SketchUp. There are multiple other websites that I go to for this kind of thing. And so there are a ton of websites that make textures and materials available both for free and paid. Um, so one of the ones that I always go to is polyhaven.com. These are CCO textures, meaning they're Creative Commons, and you can download and use them. You don't have to provide attribution or anything like that. You can just go to Assets, click on textures right here and you can find all of those different materials and you can click in here and you can find the different maps and set which ones you want to download, which ones you don't, other things like that right here. Now there's also websites like Polygon. So Polygon is actually a paid website, um, but it has higher quality assets that are more tuned to SketchUp. So they've got a ton of not only textures, but also models and other things like that that you can bring in. Um, you can bring these in as like V-Ray proxies as well, and they have their own extension, which I'm probably going to do a video on a little bit later. But um, if you're looking for kind of like high quality textures, you can go to Polygon. They do have some free textures, but a lot of them are going to be paid. Um, so in addition, there's websites like Ambient CG, which again has free 3D assets, free HDRIs, free PBR materials like this. So there's a ton of different materials there. There's also websites like Share Textures, which has the same kind of thing. It's got different models. It's got different materials and textures. Honestly, there's a bunch of these websites where I would recommend that you go if you're searching for something is actually a website called 3dassets.one. So what 3dassets.one is going to do is it's going to allow you to search a bunch of different websites for materials. So say that I'm looking for metal panels right? I just search for metal panel right here. This is going to search across all of these different websites right here in order to be able to bring those different materials in. You can also filter. So you can exclude websites where you have to sign up to download the materials. If you want to do that, you can exclude different things, but this is a great way to search multiple different websites at once. And then if you find something you like, right? So say that you want to this material right here, you would just click on it. Well, this would take you to 3dtextures.me, which is a website where you can download this and you can download the different maps in here. Now you do have to be careful with some of these. Make sure that you're actually clicking on the actual download for those materials, not on any of the, uh, on any of the ads or anything like that. Um, so that can be a little bit tricky, but that material is going to be available for download on this page. So 3dassets.one is a fantastic website for searching across multiple different websites. So that should be enough to get you started with PBR materials in SketchUp. If you want to learn more about how to tie all of this together to create great looking renderings in SketchUp with SketchUp 2025, make sure to check out my rendering workshop, which is happening on May 8th inside of the SketchUp Essentials course. I'll link to that on this page. But if you have any questions or anything that I forgot to talk about, feel free to leave them down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.